Did you uh, see Lee? Uh, yeah, yeah, for a few minutes. I was. He looks very weak. Uh, Dr. Lombard just finished examining him. Well, what did he say? Uh, nothing to me. Oh, he, uh, he told Steve that he only wants minimal staff allowed in any of those three rooms, and he wants extra sterilization enforced until they find out what kind of disease it is, and, uh, of course, to keep, keep people from catching it. Well, I have some good news for you. Terrific. I could use some good news right now. Scotty found out that Bobby has been lying about her pregnancy. Monica, then he won't have to marry her. Hardly. Oh, Monica. Oh, Lee. And he will just be so relieved. I, just the last few minutes I spent with him, that's all he could talk about. How heart sick it was that, that Scotty was going to give a flaw to Gordon. Hello, Monica. Hello, Steve. Hello, Steve. Is there any word about Lee? I'm not sure. Well, we're doing everything we possibly... Oh, and have dinner with Alan and me tonight. Uh, no, uh, no thanks. I think I'll just, uh, stick around here for a while. Gail, there isn't anything you can do here. I know, I know, but I just want to be here to talk to Dr. Lombard after he's examined all three patients, and maybe he'll let me see Lee again, and then I can tell him the good news about Scotty. <laughs> remain in Port Charles while Rick Webber goes over the results of my second EKG. Because he wants to talk to you about them, and he may just want to examine you again. Again? You know, what you doctors don't seem to understand is that every day I'm away from that desk, good business opportunities are slipping away. I don't see how that can possibly happen, Dad, considering you're on the phone every waking minute to Wall Street, Miss James. And how would you know that? Because every time I call here, the line is busy, and the hotel switchboard operator tells me you're on the phone to New York. I think you'll find you can't fool Alan. He's half detective. He is, obviously. He knows what everybody is doing and where at any given moment, don't you? Except you. I gave up on you a long time ago. But I'm beginning to think this is all a carefully laid plot. That Rick is purposely stalling to keep me here in Port Charles because Alan told him to. I talked to Mother today. She was surprised and delighted that we managed to keep you here until you're completely checked out. Well, I have been. All the specialists have turned in their reports except Rick. Perhaps you can explain that to me, Monica, since you work so closely with him in cardiology. Perhaps. You know, the heart is a very delicate instrument, and because of its delicacy, it reacts drastically to any kind of conditions. Now, what shows up on one EKG may not show up at all on another one. And the second was much more extensive. It certainly was. I was made to run up and down a little flight of stairs, after which I was rushed back to a table, and all those electronic gadgets attached to my chest. <laughs> My heart was beating so hard, I, I should have passed the test just by remaining alive. <laughs> <laughs> and that was double checking. See, there were uh, one or two areas that, that showed heightened signs that Rick had questioned with the first EKG. So he wants to compare them both carefully and make a complete report before he talks to you. Well, I look forward to that day so I can go back to work again. Of course, as Monica told you, you may want to run another one. The only way that's going to happen is over my dead body. Oh, now, Daddy, come on. I hate to see you get soft. Yeah. Well, if I'm upset and myself to all this nonsense in the first place, I feel fine. Never better, in fact. Edward, come on now. Don't think of this as a conspiracy. I think it was out of genuine concern that Alan made all the arrangements for your physical. And it is that same concern that's responsible for Rick's thoroughness. Yes, but it goes on and on and on. And you must be patient. You know, I couldn't love you or Lila more if you were my natural parents. And Alan's concern is my concern. I just want you to have a clean bill of health before we send you back to Wall Street. I'm truly sorry. My apologies. No, no need for any. I guess I have been behaving like a spoiled child. I want you to know that I love you very much too, Monica. I really look upon you as uh, a daughter now, you know. Not just the lady that Alan married. Well, Edward, thank you for saying that. You are a refreshing addition to the Quartermain family and the best thing that ever happened to Alan. <laughs> Leaving? Where are you off to so suddenly? I have an appointment. 
<laughs> well, I guess I better go down to her suite and talk to her, otherwise she'll pout all night long and be impossible to live with in the morning. Excuse me. Yeah. Thank See you. See you later, Dad. Yes. Jealousy. Tracy? That's right. She couldn't handle Dad's show of affection toward you. Oh, come on. I can't believe that. My darling, I've seen it happen all my life. Even with my mother. What? Her own mother? I've also seen it happen in reverse. With my father jealous over men that Tracy was fascinated with. To say the least, it's a very complex and volatile relationship. Oh, hell on. I'm sorry, I, uh, I can't grasp for that. Don't try. Okay, I won't. I'm just thankful that we have a simple, straightforward relationship. Yes, so am I. Hello? Oh, hi, Rick. Yeah, she's here. Hang on. It's Rick and he wants to talk to you. Oh, hi, Rick. Of course you weren't interrupting. I mean, you know I always have time to talk to you. What's up? Oh, sure, sure. Oh, uh, well, he wanted to know if I could take over his rounds for him. Good morning. Ah, uh, so what were they all up to tonight? Ah, uh, just a quiet evening at home, I guess, like us. Scotty was going to drop by, but he decided to stay in the hospital with Gail to see if there was any more, more news on Lee. Yes? Did he get any further word about Mrs. Hewitt's condition? Well, yeah, that's why he's so worried about Lee. Her condition is deteriorating moment by moment. But Lee's stabilizing, isn't he? No. No, he's showing the secondary signs Mrs. Hewitt had. I mean, fever is up, dehydration, the difficulty in swallowing, but his blood count stays the same. I mean, even verging on subnormal, along with his pulse and his blood pressure. Very strange. And there are more patients going into isolation all the time. Lester, the, the lab technician, uh, Mrs. Myers, and the kitchen staff. Now Claire Priestley, one of the nurses in isolation. Oh, I, I look out at the city and it just frightens me to think what could happen. Oh, thank God, really. Hopefully Steve will get out. A quick answer from the Center for Disease Control in Atlanta once they've checked out the samples he sent down there. I'm sure she is. I heard about the latest bulletin from Steve. You know that there are new cases being admitted almost hourly? But if there was nothing I could say to comfort her. I've never felt so helpless at all. I mean, you realize you're talking to another doctor, so standard phrases like, uh, don't worry, he's going to be just fine, and don't do any good at all. I mean, there was nothing I could say to reassure her. I know. I know. God, you can feel the tension in almost every part of this hospital. It's affecting everybody one way or the other. You know, I was talking to Jessie before, and she told me that some of the other patients have requested being transferred to other hospitals as soon as they heard the public health announcement on radio and television. Alan, if we just knew what this was, and how to deal with it. Well, they're doing the best they can. We can only pray that Atlanta will give us an answer before too long. Hi. I'm sorry. Hi. Back so late. It's uh, just that the... Excuse uh, me. Thank you. Elevator service was lousier than usual. All right, Tracy, we're getting used to you being late. Are you here to see Rick? Of course. He had lunch with us before his appointment. How did he see me? Reluctant, to say the very least. I'm not surprised, you know. It took every ounce of strength I have to convince him to come here today. But you did it, and that's the most important thing, isn't it? All right, Alan. I want a straight, honest answer from you, and no medical mumbo-jumbo. What? Is Daddy's condition serious? Deadly serious. The same weakness showed up on the two AKGs that Rick ran. Which means that our father has a definite heart irregularity. So, dear sister, I think that you better polish up on your powers of persuasion. Because you're going to have to convince our father just how serious his condition may be.
crazy and now what you must be fearful. No, you don't. You couldn't begin to know. Despite that pretty little speech you gave to Daddy last night about how you couldn't love him more if he were your own father, well, he... He is my own father. And, Monica, you can't begin to know what that means to me. Do you know that that man has always been there for me? Do you know that he has always, always believed in me no matter what I did? Oh. All right, Tracy, I'm sure that that's true. But I think you should know also that what Rick found on that EKG could very well save your father's life because he found it now. And at this very moment, he's running more tests, so he's going to be able to prescribe whatever your father needs. And in the meantime, I think you should be grateful. Grateful? Yes, grateful. <gasps> Tracy, you're going to have your father with you for a lot longer than if he continued working 18 hours a day, not knowing how serious his condition was, until he keels over with a heart attack. Okay. Okay, all right. You're right about that. I think I am. I also think that the uh, last thing in the world your father would want to see when he walks in here is, is you upset. So why don't you, uh, why don't you try to put on a happier face? Uh, good idea. I hate tears. It's a uh, sign of weakness. No, I, I don't think so. I think it's a sign of feeling. And if you want to know the truth, Tracy, I never felt closer to you than I do right now. Yeah, well, you're feeling sorry for me. Ouch. Now I know why. Do me a favor, will you? Sure. Uh, tell me, brother, that I need just a little bit of time to myself pull it together before I have to face daddy 